hey guys welcome to the channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to cut and sew a shoulder corset in order to sew this tie a lightweight floral crepe or chiffon fabric would be perfect for it and also you'll be needing nothing less than two yards of fabric depending on how long or how full you want it to be so to start i'm going to be placing my paper on fold because i'll be cutting for both the front and the back and then I'll measure my horizontal measurement, which is the chest line, the bust line, the under bust line, and the waist line. And then from the top line, I'm going to be marking half of my shoulder measurements, which is seven inches, and I'll connect it to the chest line. And then from this new line, I'll go down by one inch, while on the top line, I'll mark three inch for the neck, neck width, and then I'll connect it during the shoulder line. And then from here i'm dividing this line by two and then i'll go in by 0 0.5 inch and then on the chest line i'll mark quarter of my bust measurement and i'll add 1.5 inch sewing allowance to it and then i'll use a french curve and connect these three points then why for the back i'll connect like this And then when you're done with this, I'm going to be drafting out the neckline for this top. I'm using a V neckline for this. So I'm going down by one inch from the chest line and then I'll connect it to the neck width. While for the back, I'm going down by 1.5 inch and I'll connect it to the neck width. Also remember to add half an inch sewing allowance to the shoulder line. Then when you're done with this, on the bust line, I'm going to be marking half of my nipple to nipple measurements. I'll also mark it on the waistline and I'll connect it using a straight rule. On the waistline, I'm going to mark 0.5 inch on both sides for the darts. While on the under bust line, I'm going to be adding 0.25 inch to the 0.5 inch. So that means I'm marking 0.75 inch on both sides and I'm connecting it to the waistline. Why on the from the bust line I'll go down by one inch and I'll use a French curve to connect it like so. And then for the shoulder corset, I'm going to be using the curve end of the French curve to connect it to the neckline like so. And when you're done with that, you're going to on the waistline, I'm going to be marking quarter of my waist measurements plus one inch for the dart and then 1.5 inch for the sewing allowance and then i'll connect it to the chest line like so so after connecting on this line i'm going to go down by 1.5 inch this is a standard you can go down by two inch just depends on how low you want it to be but i think 1.5 inch is better and then from here i'm going to use a french curve i'm using the end of the french curve that is not very curved and i would connect it to the 1.5 inch and from here we are done with the drafting of this pattern so all we have to do now is to cut it out i'm going to be cutting for the back pattern first and then when you're done cutting the back pattern you're going to remove it keep it aside and you focus on the front so for the front, I'm cutting out the zipper allowance. I'm cutting out the neckline as well. And then I'm cutting the armhole for the back. And then I'll also go ahead to cut out the darts. Then after doing this, I'm just going to cut the remaining part out like so. So when you're done cutting, you're just going to label it as shown. Then after labouring it, I'm going to be doing a slash and spread on CF1, which is a cup part of this corset. So from the shoulder line, I'm dividing it by two and I'll connect it all the way to the dart. And then after connecting, I'm also going to be marking two more points where I want the slash and spread. One point is towards the neckline while the other is towards the armhole, like 1.5 inch away from the that 
And by the time I'm done connecting it, I'm just going to slash it. So when you're done slashing, I'm going to be separating each line by 0.5 inch. You can use one inch depending on how busty you are, but I prefer to use half an inch. I'm also going to open up the middle part as well using 0.5 inch and then I'll open up the last end using 0.5 inch like so. Then I'll tape it down. Then when you're done with this, you're going to be adding 0.5 inch sewing allowance to the down parts all the way to the neckline. And also, if you notice, the V neckline is a little bit bent because of the spreading that we did at that point. But this is completely normal. By the time we gather it up, it's going to go back to shape. So when you're done adding the half an inch sewing allowance all around, you're going to cut it off like this. And this is what we are going to be using to cut on the fabric. So you're going to place all of this on the fabric and you're going to cut. While for the back, you're not going to be cutting off the zipper part because there will be a zip at the back. But I don't want any dots for this dress, so I'm going to be going in by one inch and then I will remove the dots. And then also I will go in by 0.5 inch from the waistline. This is just to remove excess bulkiness at the back. Then when you're done with this, you're going to label it and place it on the fabric and cut. So this is a fabric that I use for this style. I use two yards for this dress. So now I'm going to open it up and I'll place my patterns on it and I'll cut. So by the time we are done cutting, this is what it should look like. So this is for the front pattern. Take note that I do not add any allowance to the pattern because we have already added it while drafting it. While for the down part, the CF2 and CF3, I added allowance. And then for the CF2, if you notice, the I placed it on food and I cut. And then that end is very sharp and it's more than one inch away from the original pattern. So when you open it up, it's going to look like this. Well, for the CF3, I did not cut it on fold. And when you open it up, it's going to look like this. So now I'm going to be joining the dark line together using half an inch sewing allowance. So when you place it like this and you pin it down, you sew it. So by the time you're done sewing, this is what it should look like when you open it up. Why for the CF1, I'm going to remove the pattern from it. And then I've also gone ahead to cut for the lining as well. So now you're going to open it up you place the lining on it. Then after placing the lining on it, you arrange it properly and then you sew on the neckline using half an inch sewing allowance. And also by this time I was done sewing the neckline of the cup part of this dress. So now what we have to do is to join it to the band and in order to do this i'm going to be measuring around the circle on the band so in order to measure this i'm going to be measuring from the point where it is one inch about one inch wide all the way to the other end while on the cup parts i'm going to be running a gather stitch from the neckline point all the way to the other end Then by the time you are done running the gather stitch, you are going to gather it. 
making sure we get back the measurements that we got while measuring the band. Okay, by the time you're done, this is what it should look like. So now we are going to just measure it from the neckline point all the way to the arm room. And then take note that the gathering is starting from about three inch away from the neckline and it's ending about three inch away from the armhole when you get the exact measurements that we have on the band we're going to be placing the cup to the band like so at exactly that one inch point that we marked so we are going to be pinning it down at about 0 0.5 inch on that point We are going to be joining the neck, the cup part to the band using 0.5 inch sewing allowance. So we are going to be pinning it from the neckline all the way to the armhole. So just pay close attention to how I'm pinning it. I'm making sure that I'm arranging it very well, making sure the gathers is evenly spread from that three inch point away from the neckline. All the way to the three inch points away from the armhole. Please take your time when doing this because the beauty of this dress comes from this part. So when you reach the armhole, you're going to be aligning it like I'm doing. So by the time you're done pinning it and you turn it to the right side, this is what it should look like. If you have been sewing for a while, you may not need to pin it. You can just directly take it to the sewing machine and sew it all the way to the end. But if you're a beginner, I would advise you you do this before taking it to the sewing machine so by the time you're done pinning this is what it should look like at the right side then after sewing the first one we are going to be sewing the second one joining the cup to the band so how we are going to do it is we are also going to place cup on the remaining 0 0.5 inch points on the band just pay attention to how I'm pinning it. If you turn it to the right side and it's not equal or well arranged, that, that means you have to remove it and pin it again in such a way that when you turn it to the right side, it should be well formed. So when you get what you're looking for, you're going to pin it all the way down to the other side. while for the ammo we are going to be placing it like so and we are going to be pinning it so when you turn it to the right side the ammo should be well formed and then you pin it all the way to the other side and then remember the, the gathers is starting from three inch away from the ammo and it's stopping at three inch away from the neckline. So by the time you're done sewing, this is what it should look like. And if you take notes at the middle, there's still that end coming out. By the time we are lining it, it's going to, we are going to be removing that part. So when you turn it to the wrong side, this is what it should look like. If you did a correct thing, the half an inch sewing allowance for both cup would join at the neckline like that. So in order to line this, I'm going to be folding that sharp end that we have inward and I'm going to be folding the lining as well inward and then I'm going to pin it like so all the way to the armhole.
there are different ways to do this i think this is more easy and you can always weave the end the cup end when by the time you are done so when you turn it to the right side you notice that that point is gone and this is what we have so at this point also you can still go ahead to top stitch it especially if you're not a beginner if you're a beginner just keep it because it's best to not top stitch it than doing a dirty job so i've top stitched on one side and i don't know if you can notice the difference from top stitching and not top stitching and then at this point i'm done top stitching on both cup and this is what it looks like so now we are going to be focusing on the back of the dress so in order to do this i've gone ahead to cut on the fabric and also the lining so i'm going to be aligning placing the the lining on the fabric like so and i'm going to be joining it at the neckline using half an inch sewing allowance and then by the time i'm done joining i'm also going to join it at the zipper line using 0 0.25 inch sewing allowance so by the time you're done closing it at the zipper line you're going to be joining the front of the, the bodies to the back in order to do this we're going to be joining it at the shoulder line so remember we added 0 0.5 inch sewing allowance on the shoulder line but by the time we are sewing we are going to be using instead of 0 0.5 inch you are going to be using one inch sewing allowance it's just to ensure that the, the dress is well placed on our body and is firm at that shoulder point and then after joining it we are going to be joining it at the side seam as well arranging it like so so when you're done with that the next thing to do now is to cut the down part of the dress so i've placed this fabric on fold it's actually folded into four pieces and the length of it is depending on how long you want it to be while the width of it is times two or times three of your waistline for example if your waistline is 24 inches you are going to be times in it by two or three so my waistline is 24 so i times it by three that is 72 inches so the width of this fabric is about 72 inches so it just depends on how full you want the gathers to be but for the first one that i sewed i used 2.5 it was not up to 3 inches that's why it was not that full and i prefer it that way So now, right now you're going to be running a gather stitch on the edge of the fabric like so. And by the time you're done running the gather stitch, you're going to be gathering it, making sure you get back the measurements that we have on the bodies. In order to know the exact measurements we have on the waistline of the bodies we are going to measure it so right now i got 26 to 27 inches there about so now i'm going to be measuring it on the skirt part of this dress making sure that i get back at 27 inches so if and also take note that the gathers is starting from about one inch away from the zipper line so when you get back the 27 inches or depending on your waistline you're going to be joining the skirt parts to the bodies of this dress make sure the gathers is evenly arranged throughout the waistline and then when you're done you're going to be attaching an invincible zipper to this dress Then, then after joining the zip all we have to do now is to hem the end of the dress and and then fix any sleeve of your choice so if you did enjoy this video please remember to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and i will see you in my next one Bye.